Good morning, police emergency. How may I assist you? Good evening and welcome to Ghana Police Watch. Our last program, Citizens Meet the Police, appears to strike a deep chord with most of our viewers with several responses and requests for more. Kwame Ishan in Kumasi says, this is great. It's the first time I have seen on TV such a cordial and productive dialogue with police officers. James Cranting says, a good one there. Baba Awal from Tamale says, please bring this to Tamale. Kudos. Ghana Police Watch. Don't forget us in Amokum Kumasi, says Kwame Dakum. The persistent suggestion from viewers is that it would be hugely beneficial if this positive engagement was replicated across the country. In view of this, Ghana Police Watch went to another community to bring you another unique report. This time, the location was a taxi rank at Su Tum, Enya area. And it started with great pomp and ceremony with the traditional leaders of the area fully represented. That was great. Before we get to the discussion, however, we would like to bring to your attention an initiative by the Ghana Police Service, more specifically, Accra Region Command's new publication called Police Diary, focused on Accra Region. This is another newsworthy initiative to embolden the ongoing positive dialogue between the police and the public. There are highly informative sections on combating kidnapping and other security threats, a profile of Accra Region Police Command creating awareness against kidnapping, including security at places of worship and traffic offences in Accra. There is a lot more. We return to Suutum Taxi Rank. In actual fact, the event did not nearly come off. Just as it was starting, the heavens opened up and there was a massive downpour. Incredibly, everybody stayed for this very important engagement. We'd like to say a big thank you to all the people who came and stayed, the traditional leaders and of course the community units of the Ghana Police Service led by ACP Reverend Akoli. After the session, I shall be talking to ACP David Oklu, Director General, Public Affairs Department, Ghana Police Service, about the issues raised and the significance of these events, promoting a better dialogue between citizens and the police. And I said, a new room. I'm a police minister at here. I see, I don't know what that could be said. I'm a man who be paid. And so, said this, you can't. The police need be a deep bonnet will find be so. Ah, and young run a man of fire, minia by minia by my poor body. Man in two police in twenty four and ten. Sir, police a sim a sino or ya a b c dia and ya and see ya per se mushana muka. Hello, Patrick, 
That's who gave me. You don't want to say. For area BR, police emergency number 191. Police emergency number 191. And 18555. No, eight here. 18355. Me patrol at any given time. BR. Oh, who bet show no? Oh, boss, sir, number, yeah. And them, security is a shared responsibility. Oh, yeah, oh, dear, now, Mr. Miyam, dear, I soon be able to. Ebra, no, yeah, ma'am, yeah, kasa, no. Okay, kasa, be said, police for moro, emra, so. Na, obo, pips. E, ni pa, waha, yi, na, no. Be, bre, kura, no, pips. E, be, din, si, police, ni, be, yo, bonen, no, weko, so, tu, na, woko, kachira, wong. Knamaka, Knamaya, Mujama, you be who no seco. Ain't you all my bahai? Yen ya no mawahai. Ada braca by via peso or no. Omo my assonte, ni plenty for no, a be a gnuna. Dear Tosumi, no so. Name bra penny no di can cassayo. Or so we are oppressing me, and pat me moon. Now, ya hear for a temporal no swinging, ya no monoaha. Omunum, baby, and ye my wall. Antia ku any insufa a publish a and tema eco compi. Kania bako kra moho and so district assembly ebe. Ye di bia be bubo kwa hoko. Yen mi yamma ye yirin num de pia ye du won bag. Ye num wi woho a crown for a fra a wogana e hon no moshe. Asasini she a him for nensa. Asasini e ura. I don't know him for no, Emma and Sassin Muran and can say Samoon no assassin as well. Ye will be glad, ye beg you must and I beg you to myself. The police for a war area, Hano. Oh, my young young baby, and said, not and fatter. And run and can say, Oh, my young papa, near here on the set. Police had to complain. And I had the issues and the year Juma. So area police and year Juma. Sabi, you were police in Penning Fua. Who went to me? I go through the proper channel through petition. Now, police in Penning Fua say, Sir, police, you what area? Hey, now Juma no wire Siano on the area boys and the area mama, area whatever. Eh, yeah, but I had deep on the at no police in Penny Fono and so I no and them. Yes, I had just a bonnet in the air cosso. Now, you see, in swatch a hinamua a day. Eh, eh, be a naya chawa baby. Yet you must see an and swanny. And yet, yes, I have a tree and hook a crap. Now, before frost wabba, new ideas, dear Ayakama, a boy, a man near Macosso. Police car, let's open the saloon and I do a wrong. A word the entire year blow siren say a cause scene of crime. Man, yam funny say robbery a see a baby. Now your friend police for say yam bra. Police for yam call on mono. Yam vote say any say ni pana a semino a see one is on a ninqua a mu a hiaye. And I need japa the answer. I yam pese ye g a friend in semon so no a non so a mu a hiaye. But say ye caught na ye blow sirena one ye per se casa a walk when mono omu my ye pine ye and timin drew ho in ten. Make robbery and theft unattractive. Help stop the robbers and thieves. They come only to steal and deprive you of your valuable property. Did you know that your stolen items are sold cheaply to unsuspecting buyers? Do not make your home or workplace an easy target for robbers and thieves. Protect your property. Secure your electronic gadgets such as TV sets, ghetto blasters, laptop computers, mobile phones and other valuables by marking them. Permanently mark your items with your name or a unique symbol. This will serve as a disincentive to thieves. Take pictures of your items and write down their serial and model numbers, as well as keep purchase receipts of your property. 
also know the special ID number on your mobile phone, tablet or iPad and remember to inscribe a unique mark on your items. Your ID marks, photographs, receipts, model and serial numbers and special ID numbers of your mobile devices will help the police to retrieve your items in case they are stolen. Fit your doors with quality locks and secure your windows. Install CCTV cameras if you can afford them and make sure they are working properly. It helps the police to arrest thieves. Know your neighbors and develop a good rapport with them so that you can assist one another in the event of a robbery attack. Do not resist or fight back when robbers demand for your money or other valuables. You may be harmed or killed if you resist. In the event of a robbery, do not touch things around before you call the police. Thieves always leave clues at the scene. This may help in tracing them. Call the police emergency lines on 191 toll free on all networks and 18555 on Vodafone and MTN for help. Miss Swamu, Sanya Mana Ekosu, the neighborhood watch committee, no, ever yet a Juma dia, then Yamuni Ahimfono, ever yet Bako. Who is that? Bonnie B. Air Coswa, Mepacho, immediately, no, your numbers no more, Frayen, Ahimfono, or why you're ready, Yanin Komo, Yanya Bako, Sanya Baya, ye better ye, Nan ye a Yano, Yashena Yaye, Santa Mumi Faka, from Kashima. Now me do um Auntie Ku Jan Sheno. Now there was a policeman um no jina a honum. Anna all of a sudden can he um ojina ye. So ojina ye no anna um o ye ne line says no. Na no no in the BS semi kind mom yeah very vigilant. Almost one day um two cities I share line says name so why ni say or any say and what did ma um a policeman no anna or j ye any time person in business say, um, Ome Jai Bride, a Gianna. Anna, another thing, me say, war, um, Vision One, saying, see, um, they say, yeah, Ome Jai Bride, they say, eh, yeah, Anna, who said, the new ones, you know, from direct from SHS, when they come for the training and then they are done, say, yeah, post here, almost, say, but like, Ome Jina, Kwan will say, yeah, eh, yeah, answer, Ome Bano, and Penny Food, Nibu, um, um, Tretin, Omo, Amomo, and Price, say, and Sana Ombe Rie, a Juma for the night, no. I was so many this amount of money. Ah, I was so many ba. It's a person in business, and I'm so a partner, Madam Asi. At the end of the event, it was clear that everybody who came had benefited immensely from the discussions and wished to see more in our communities and across the country. From citizens, such a forum gives a unique opportunity to share their problems and get direct answers to them. Together, cementing the blocks of efficient policing to ensure that security is indeed a joint responsibility. You're welcome to the discussion segment here on Ghana Police Watch. And tonight I have with me the Director General of the Public Affairs Directorate of the Ghana Police Service, ACP David Eklu. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us. Uh, it's my ACP. pleasure. Thank you. So we've been having, or the police have been having a series of these engagements with the public, what they call them community engagements, and uh, they're proving to be quite a hit. What's the whole idea? It has been on for quite a while now. We've had regional commanders going out to the public to engage them, obtain feedback on policing services, their concerns, so that they can also relate to them on one-on-one -on -one basis. I think that it is, it is a, a very good initiative that we are undertaking as part of community policing, where we are taking policing to the doorsteps of the community, if I have to put it that way. Yes. What prompted you to start these engagements? We realized that communication is key. Engaging our stakeholders about the services that we provide is very important. It's a critical component of policing because it engenders public confidence it promotes accountability, and it gets the police and the public closer. Because sometimes there are certain sentiments that uh, members of the public have about, about police officers. There are also some issues that police have about community. 
But when they meet in a very formal or informal setting, you begin to understand that, well, it was just an issue of miscommunication. It is just an issue of not getting the messages across properly. So it is it's a key aspect of policing that we are shifting from the traditional policing when something happens. It is only when something happens that the police appear to effect arrest and they get back. But we are trying to break that gap so that the police and the public will be seen as playing a complementary role in ensuring safety and security in communities. And we realize that through these community engagements, there have been a number of issues that have come up, which uh, have been addressed some way, somehow, by the uh, officers who were on ground yeah. at the time. But what sort of feedback are you getting? Apart from the commanders, the community policing unit actually spearheads this engagement, in addition to forming neighborhood watch committees in the various committees. And, uh, and when they come, they bring their report. But I think that is the first time or we've not been having this media uh, engagements publicized in the media. So this, this, this one that was shown on Ghana Police Watch has even given us a broader eyeball. People are viewing it from afar. And this happened at Santa Maria in Accra. But look at the number of people who are watching it and also know that, yeah, police are getting closer to the community. And I think that it is a, it is a, it is a good feedback mechanism to find out how people are receiving the services, how people, it is not very easy for people to walk to a police station to say, I have this complaint because of certain inhibitions that people have. But when the police move to the community and sit down with them, it, 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 it is a very welcoming development that we are seeing our officers going to the communities in their own safe comfort zone so that they can let out their grievances and also get some explanations about the policing services that we provide. One of the issues that uh, came up in this particular engagement had to do with the way the police treat the members of the public who show up at police stations. They, there was a gentleman who said, when uh, you stand near the uh, counter, counter yes, and yes, then the yeah, yeah. policeman is uh, essentially yelling at you yeah, to, uh, yeah, yeah. to stay away. Yeah. I mean, this is, well, this is something that apparently happens a lot in the police station. It is a fact. And interestingly, two weeks ago, we had a course on communicating with communities for over 120 senior police officers. And that was the main, it was even, there was a role play about somebody walking to a police station. The person is distressed. He wants an attention and you see this police officer yelling. Sometimes they say, don't even put your hand on the counter <laughs> and things like that. These are behaviors. Why, why do they say that? I think that these are behaviors that we want to change. It is unacceptable. But why do they say don't put your hand on the counter man? on the counter? I, I cannot. It is just one of these police, um, what, how could I, would I call it? It's one of these police intimidating tactics that I would okay. put it that way, which is not acceptable. And that's what we seek to change. So that you, you, the police station should be a place that is welcoming because you are coming there with a complaint. You are coming there with some grievance that you would want somebody to even listen. So the posture of the policeman at the police station should be like any other front like desk, where you go there, where you receive that attention, where even if they cannot help you immediately, you should feel that, yes, somebody has listened to your problem. It, it is all about ensuring security. Security is not just about picking somebody from, but it is about making sure that the person who comes to the police station gets some kind of uh, relief. So it is essentially communication. Yeah. That's why we are introducing what I mentioned, like, uh, what I mentioned earlier on, communicating with communities. It is a very essential policing tool that we try to mainstream in police training. From the way you've put it, it sounds more like this is something that has been the way the policeman would yell at you when you're getting close to the counter and they don't put your hand on the counter. It's, it's, it appears to be something that's in, it's ingrained in the police and so it will take a whole lot more. It's more like a mentality thing, changing their mindset. How will these engagements help change their mindsets? Yes, it's a culture that even some of us, a lot of officers complain that this, this is a culture. I don't know where it is coming from, but it's, it's something that we call learned behavior. You are a junior officer, you come to the police station, and you meet your senior doing that. You think that it's right, which is not right. So it, is, it, it might not happen immediately. It might not be dramatic, but it is a gradual process of letting, even this discussion that 
I'm no, I know certainly will be watched by millions of people would and even police officers themselves would send signals that look this is not the posture that we want we want a change in attitude in change in our relation with the people that we serve how about starting at the training schools where you the policemen are told that these are these people you engage members of the public you engage are clients and not necessarily suspects yes we that's why i'm saying that we have introduced communicating with communities. We finish the first phase. Next week, we'll do the second phase. For Is this happening in the training schools? Yes, at the police academy. By the end of this month or next month, we are getting support from Arab. That's a, a rule of law and accountability program of the European Union to introduce it right from the training school to the highest level so that it becomes a taught subject. Sometimes, if it, it is formalized and taught and there are role plays and there's feedback, then it's a, an effective way of changing the culture. Occasionally, our officers do mention it, supervisors do mention it during welfare meetings, but sometimes it doesn't sink. But if it is taught, then it becomes part of the police training culture that the recruit, the young constable, or any other person who attends any in-service training will take that culture, away, that culture back to say that, look, we need not be so aggressive towards members of the public who need our services. It might not happen immediately, but I think that it's a great start. It's a, it's a very great start that we are now formalizing that kind of training. Yeah. Right, so let's get into some of the specific yeah. issues that yeah. have come up in these engagements. One of them has to do with when you make a complaint or you lodge a complaint at the police station and it requires that there's some form of transportation or transporting the police officer or a team to the crime scene. And then the police will say you'd have to come up with money to you know, foot the bill. Why does that have to happen? In an ideal situation, that should not happen. Because one, the police are providing a service as agents of the state. And the state is supposed to foot the bill. Fo fund the police and provide the police with all the logistics. All right. But in reality, they cannot be operating at that 100% level. So there are some challenges that police officers face when they have to go and effect arrest or when they have to attend to a crime scene. But it is the way it is communicated, I think, is a problem. There are others who voluntarily say, well, if you don't have transport, I'll support you. But to make it a condition that because you did not provide transport, we are not going to respond to that uh, crime is wrong. Because even if you are not able to do that because you don't have the ability, you can call for support. You can always call for patrol teams. But these days, we have patrol teams at almost all the zones that can respond to crime scenes. So, so as I said, it is not compulsory. And sometimes it might even compromise police because if I come to report that Israeli has done something, then I tell Israel, you wait, I'll come. Then the next time I bring police officers in my vehicle to you, how would the public feel? They will think that I have gone, even though I might not have influenced the police yeah. in any way, but just going in my vehicle to you to effect your arrest, on the outside will think that, well, this person has gone to pay the police to come and show me. So it is not the best situation. And we always advise that where you cannot get transport, there is a way that you can communicate, that people can support. There are ways that people will willingly say, well, if you cannot go, I will want to offer my vehicle. But it should not be, as I said, a condition for you responding to a crime scene or a complaint from a member of the public. But from the way you're explaining, if the police is unable to provide that transportation and you are also not in a position to support, it means that whatever crime is taking place, would continue to take place. You see, every crime is graded in terms of priority. If it is a robbery in progress, you can be sure that police will go. But if it is a crime that is not very urgent, it's a, in the it's sense a, that... So you say it's a robbery in progress. Yes. The police will definitely go. Certainly. Yeah, but if... I, I'm, I'm sure the people who are watching us right now who are saying that, no, 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 they, they, they don't believe that. They should go. And that's why we have the emergency They're number. taking your word for it as they're watching right now. What I'm saying is that they should go. Okay. There are instances where there might be delays, but the general principle is that 
we grade the crimes and looking at the agency of it, the response will determine the type of crime. So if it's a robbery, it's a violent crime that is going on, police will definitely have to go. And that is why we have the emergency numbers 191 and 18555. So if, if it is not even possible for you to run to a police station, you can always call and help should come. All right. Yeah. So we're, go we're not going to get any more, or we shouldn't expect any more, um, you call the police and then they say, well, we don't have a vehicle here, so unfortunately we can't help you. It should not be an excuse. It should not be an excuse. You must find, I mean, there are several steps that you need to take. And you must exhaust all those steps. But just saying that I don't have a vehicle, so I'm not going to take your complaint, it's not professional, it is not correct. There are also instances where people have to withdraw a case or a complaint from the police and they're asked to pay. How regular is that? Those who have paid that, those monies, have they questioned the police why they should pay? Because there are instances where you bring a complaint, which is a minor, maybe there's an assault or maybe um, an altercation between you and another person. The case, case comes to the police and people step in and say, oh, these are neighbors who would want to settle this case at home and give you a report. After they have settled, they write a letter to the complainant, write a letter to the commander, well, I lodge a complaint, so, so and so, but it has been amicably settled, there's peace now, so I'm no, I'm no longer interested in pursuing the case. So the, the, your, your withdrawal letter is filed on the case docket, so it is considered closed because you are the complainant. So that's it. So to say that you should pay money, what, what money, what, what, what is that money for? So people should also begin to question why I should pay that money. So it's a no-no. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. What would you regard as a serious case? Which can't be withdrawn? Like? Of course, robbery. Of course, defilement. Rape. Of rape. Murder. So we have first degree felonies that cannot be withdrawn. That becomes the state against uh, the offender. Traffic accidents where I ran into your car. I said, oh, I'm sorry about this. Let's go and settle. Let me go and fix your car for you. So you go to the police station, you file the complaint. Then the, the other person who ran into the car said, oh, we have come to an agreement. Let's go. I fix your car. I'm satisfied that you have fixed my car. I come back to the police station and make a, a send a report that, well, I did, it, I did lodge this complaint here, but the, the other person has repaired my car, I'm satisfied, I'm no longer interested in the case. So traffic incident, accidents that are not very major can also be settled Result this way. Yeah. That way. But the no new ones are rape, defilement, and of course the first degree felonies. And in, in, the, in these instances, in, in fact, when you send or you write to the police, the commander should be in a position to say, yes, these ones we can let go, but these ones no. Yes. He should be able to explain to you the type of offenses, the implications, and all that. That should be the communication. That's what we expect to be done. At the right. So you don't have to pay anything if you were drawing your case from the police station. How about medical reports or medical forms? You see, all forms obtained from the police, either it's a medical form or all those ones, are state forms. They are evidence, they are for evidential purpose. So that if you come to complain of an assault, there should be a medical certificate indicating that there's, you've suffered these injuries or you were assaulted. So you take it to the a public health institution and the medical doctor endorses it. What I know is that some doctors demand payment because they might be called to travel to the court for evidence and things like that. So some doctors do demand payment for it. But at the police station, the medical form is not sold. Anything that is not officially sold at any police station is not received. It's not, uh, there's no receipt completely. But if you want to go for a police clearance certificate, maybe you want a job, you want to travel outside, and you need a criminal background check, you, your, the fees are spelled out to you, and there's a receipt covering that. If you want to apply for an accident report for insurance purposes or for your own investigation, you need to pay some amount of money. And that one, there's a fee. And there's a police receipt with all the serial numbers, everything on it. So those are 
proper fees that you pay. Those are statutory fees that you pay at the police station. Any other one that is not supported by receipt is not correct. It is unacceptable. It's not official. And don't pay. And don't pay. Now, one other issue that came up at the community engagement has to do with uh, police officers not wearing name tags. I know everybody, all the police officers, are supposed to wear name tags, like you have yours on. Why is it that some are not wearing them? You see, the wearing of name tag came about some years back, I think a couple of years back, because of identifying police officers and people to know that there's a name behind this uniform. Previously, there used to be service numbers for the junior ranks. Then from inspector and above, you don't wear it. But this idea came as a way of ensuring police accountability and people know that this is a clue behind this, in this uniform. So the administration started supplying police officers with name tags, which were pinned on their uniform. At a certain point, the names were even soon embroidered in the uniform. But along the line, some of the name tags got damaged and there was no replacement. So you, you find that most officers who wear the name tags are those that make them for themselves. But there was a discussion last week as to how best we can introduce the name tags, either we should have it uh, woven into the, the uniform so that the issue of it peeling off will not arise. But for now, it is standard practice, especially for the newly trained MTTD officers who are in this white uh, tunic, that there's always a name tag. So that is the situation now. But most, most of, some of them wear, others don't wear because they have not been supplied. But I think that, as I indicated, there is a move now to get everybody that standard identification. Now, where another issue that came up has to do with police officers, especially MTTD officers who hide sometimes in bushes and wait for vehicles to pounce on them. So they surprise you. So you're, you're driving and you make an error and the policeman just jumps out of nowhere and says, I've arrested you. Why do they have to hide? I think for every police action, crime prevention is key. So you don't wait for the crime to happen. You don't wait for the person to flout or maybe you know, before you jump or you before you take action. That is why this police uniform is to warn you that there's a state authority, so you must respect the, the, the law. That's why MTTD officers who are in white tunic would always raise their hands ahead, and they are always visible. That is why we say it's police visibility. So for them to hide, in an obscure place. But you know they do that. Yes. I'm, I'm just, I'm not explaining and justifying what, why they do it. Okay. But there can be instances where if you are driving, have it at the back of your mind that I can meet the police at any time. So that gives you that self-regulation that don't overspeed, respect the traffic regulations. But as to whether they jump, they, they hide, that one may be a tactical decision because <laughs> That will depend on the officer's judgment. It is not the best, okay. but it's not in all instances. So sometimes you see police officers far, they raise their hand. So that warns you that there's the, uh, there is a state authority ahead. So you need to stop. But as to why they should pull a surprise on you may not have a uniform explanation. Okay. I cannot give you a standard <laughs> explanation and that's how police should behave. I like you for being frank with, with regarding that. That is that's the point. Yes. yes. So, but certain times when you talk to police officers on the ground, they will tell you that well, it is to tell you that you can meet the police anywhere, <laughs> because there is no off limit for a police officer to conduct policing. But it is left to the best sense of judgment of the officer, because your actions should not cause accident. So if stopping that car in that cave can cause accident, you don't have to do yeah. it. Yes, that's a fact. Yeah. Now, we also tend to get a lot of complaints from drivers, especially commercial drivers, and they're talking about 
uh, what you call bookmen. These people are at the lorry stations yeah. or terminals. Station, yeah, yeah. And what they tend to do is they assume certain level of authority, yeah. almost like policemen. They can actually arrest the driver and send the driver to the police station. Mm. And sometimes they use extreme measures. Yeah. They, they can go as far as, we're told that they can go as far as taking off your car battery and ensuring that they send you to the police station. Are they allowed to do that? I know that we have citizens arrests, but these people go beyond citizens arrests. Yeah, I think that your scenario you're painting indicates that they are abusing their a little bit of authority that they have given them based on the driver's union own self-regulatory activities that well. So the, drive, the driver's unions are trying to check themselves. Exactly, exactly. And there are certain times when we even call the union executives to bring this driver because if of ABC and maybe they would want to even avoid any confrontation with the driver or the driver behaves in a way that the police say, well, go and call or he calls the executive and said, this driver, the way he's behaving, he might cause accident. So have a word with him. So in that case, yes, they can bring you to the police station or the police can go there and talk to the executives about it. It is a kind of relations that the police and then the drivers you know, have built to make sure that there's safety on the road. But sometimes individuals, when you give them a little bit of authority, they would want to assume powers that they don't have, yeah. especially physically assaulting is wrong. It's wrong. There are even instances where, where I have seen uh, bookmen with uh, some long stick, with even nails stuck in them, so that if you park wrongly, they can even go and deflate your tire. So I call them and say, look, you can you are you are you are you are rather increasing that kind of confrontation because you don't have that right. If you think that the person has done something wrong, take him to the police station or call the police. So this is a caution to book men and then the drivers, executives and all that, because we have very good relations with them to make sure that we have we enhance road safety. But this is the feedback. So if they are watching this program and they are listening to this program please tell them their bookmen to tone down. They are not police and do not have that authority at all. But they will say that, well, we just arrest you and hand you over to the police. So we're not exactly, you know, playing the role of police. Some of them overdo it. If definitely a driver needs to be brought to book, they have to do it. But not in a way that would be like they assume authority. If you are a driver and you, you are, you know, sometimes they say, driver, you are stubborn. So you bet you and as we show him, so they pull you to the police station. That is wrong. So I think that there's a need for us to look at that aspect of it, so that there's no internal uh, violence or violence even at the lorry stations where passengers are. So it is a good point that you have raised. We also raise it with the MTTD, so that when they meet the various drivers' unions, GPRTU, Putua, and all that, and they should tell them that the the authority they have given to the bookmen to maintain order. The bookmen are just to maintain order. If the drivers are in the, if the passengers are in the queue, the first person comes, he joins, and then the, the vehicles move in a very smooth way, uh, in a very orderly way, so that drivers don't come and jump the queue. So that if you are on skill, as they say at the state lorry station, to load, after loading, then another person comes. They are, that's their responsibility. And also ensure that passengers' luggage and other things are properly secured yeah. at the station before they, they take off. So those are the responsibilities of bookmen at the station. And maybe a few of them who also want to uh, show some muscle, which is wrong. And I think that it should be condemned. And we need to take it up with the various uh, drivers' um, unions. And staying with commercial, the issue of commercial drivers, I was recently approached by a commercial driver who said we should bring Ghana Police Watch to Medina and that there's a, a parking, the, the um, bus stop over there is not big enough. And so they're compelled to sometimes park or stop on the road. And when they do that... Is that at Zongo Junction, just after the bridge? Zongo Junction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they do that, then yeah. the police come and, and get them. We, we had similar complaints from La Paz and, and all over. Mm. How can this be resolved? Because, yes, if the bus stop is not big enough, and it is a designated bus stop that they have to stop, why are they being arrested? If I think that when I was a district commander, we, I resolved this issue through dialogue with the municipal or local authorities so that they look at the area, if they have to widen it or even move it 
to another place for convenience, it is okay. So I think that these issues, some of these issues, arrest alone don't solve the problem, even though it is necessary. So if these things are happening at Medina, I know the, the, district, the divisional MTU commander is a very proactive person. They need to look at it and see how it can that issue can La Paz and, La Paz sure and all those places. Yes. But the fact is that some drivers are stubborn. If I have to, if I have to put that, that, no matter what you do, they would always, even drivers, especially commercial drivers, would always want to stop in the middle. Once they set their eyes on the passenger, whether a vehicle is following them or not, they will stop and take. So it is, it is both um, a little uh, enforcement plus education, and then also looking at the environmental design in, an, uh, in conjunction with the various local authorities. If those issues are come up and they take it up, I think we should be able to resolve that. Because we have had several complaints about that Zongo Junction just after the traffic light on the right there. Uh, yes, on the right there. It's always a problem. Yeah. All right. So uh, Ghana Police Watch will be coming to Zongo Junction sometime soon. So not to worry. We'll come and discuss that, have a community engagement with you. Certainly. And get to understand yeah, yeah. the uh, issues uh, properly. Yeah. And then we have also have the issue of policemen who are seen drinking in uniform. So they actually go to uh, the, the pubs and they ask for, for booze when they are in uniform. And we have, we've had those complaints also come across that it's, it's not appropriate. It's clearly not appropriate. I think that is a very important feedback and that, that community engagement is very important. It is an engagement that will give feedback to police officers. And I know a lot of police officers who watch this program. It is clear that you don't drink alcohol in uniform, except that at certain instances, like you go for a funeral, a group funeral for an officer or any other person. Yes, those ones are under kind of controlled situations. But where you are a police officer on patrol duties, and there is a drinking spot, and you stop, and then you go for alcohol. Sometimes for free. It is unprofessional. It's just like other jurisdictions where they will not even accept coffee. So it is wrong, it is unprofessional. And since this is coming from the public, I would want all police officers who are watching this program that people know good policing. Policing has been with us for more, over more than a century. And sometimes we say it in a local language, police in pan or easy. It means that the public don't expect police officers to behave that way. Sometimes, even if you don't dress properly, people look at you as a police in the pan or what you say. So it is a very important feedback. And we have a WhatsApp number where police officers who put up such unprofessional conduct understand some even buy and they don't pay, <laughs> thinking that I am in uniform so yeah. I can go and grab anything and go scot free. Uniform allowance. It's unacceptable. It's unprofessional. It is, uh, it is against police ethics and police regulations. If you don't stop it, I'm talking to police officers. If you don't stop it, you'll be embarrassed because we have a video, we have a, a WhatsApp number that we have put out and we've been receiving videos about police misconduct. And interesting thing, thing to, we have also received videos about police professionalism. And those ones have been commended. Others will be exposed. And if you are exposed, the disgrace that comes to you as an officer, the disgrace that comes to you as a past student of a school, your colleagues will see you and see that this is not police-like. We have a language that this is not police-like. Right. So please desist because the public are reporting these issues, not to us, but through public engagements. The next time they take it up on social media and it's going to be, it's not going to be a pleasant feedback. Right. So it is unprofessional, it's unacceptable. And let me also tell people who operate drinking spots that if a police officer comes to you to buy alcohol, especially if it's on patrol duties, tell him, I will not sell to you. Politely, I'm sorry. You can come after duty, but I've seen you in uniform. You're supposed to be patrolling this area. You're supposed to be alert and protect us. How do I give you alcohol? 
So don't sell to yeah. them. Just like there is a law that you don't sell alcohol to minors. So similar thing. So if a police officer comes to uniform, especially when he's on patrol duties or he's on duty, so there are other occasions where they order in bulk. That, that is acceptable. Or maybe when they, are, they buy the drink, they are in the barracks or in the in environment, fine. But while some patrol do you see, he pulls up, you see the patrol car, he comes and says, oh, give me a shot. It is also a way of checking on our officers. So politely say, I will not sell to you, sir. Right. And the WhatsApp number that you announced is going to be on the screen, right? We're going to put it on the screen. But we're also aware that the IGP has indicated that we are going to release or uh, publish additional yeah, numbers. numbers. That will be coming people. very soon, yeah. All right, so that people can send their complaints, film. Exactly. Let's talk about all the directives, that set of directives that the IGP announced recently, essentially putting senior police officers in charge of uh, other policemen who are out there on, uh, on duties at, at barriers and checkpoints. You see, that was a very significant move by the Inspector General of Police and members of the Police Management Board in response to several complaints, including these ones that we are discussing yeah. about some unprofessional conduct on police, uh, by police, some police officers, which tend to put a blot on our image, who tend to, which tend to, you know, uh, you know, derail the efforts that we are making in rebuilding the image of the Ghana Police Service. So that announcement, as indicated, is a very serious move that we are undertaking. The Inspector General of Police, with the members of the Police Management Board, and all commanders. Because the role of a senior officer, when I say senior officer, maybe on the program you have to uh, show officers the ranking system. Right. Uh, so that a senior you officer, you should do that sometimes. Yes, yeah. A senior officer's rank begins from an ASP and above, and an ASP has two stars here. A DSP has three stars. A superintendent has two eagles here. A chief superintendent has the two eagles facing each other, and then there's a star, and then an assistant commissioner, and then all and on. I think we have to show people more yeah. so they can identify who a senior police officer is. And our role as officers is to supervise and to ensure that we maintain professional standards, that police in integrity. So instead of sitting down and sending the officers on the beat, and sometimes when they confront the situation, they'll say, well, order from above. Now what we want to do is the above, that order from bring, above should be there. The above yes. to the below. Yes. Or to the ground. Exactly. Because there are certain issues that can be settled, especially some minor traffic offenses can be settled there, settled in a way that the officer can intervene and say, well, you, you, you have um, run the traffic lights, or you were over speeding, or you didn't have your driver's license, but you work at this organization. Well, I'm giving you a note, you can go and back on your journey, provided you have been certified as a competent driver, your vehicle is in good condition, drive and come back to us after maybe you are caught in between Accra and Kumasi. Come back here and then you will process for court. There are sometimes you can even give a verbal caution and your details are taken that don't do this. The next time you do it, your records are with us, you'll be taken to court. So some of these minor issues can be resolved without unnecessary delay. Sometimes you see uh, our 10 cars parked on a stretch by the road and they have to you know, delay and all that. Sometimes passengers are there. There are some who would have to go and catch another bus or all that. So senior officers can on the spot because they have a higher level of administrative and operational authority over the other ranks, over the general rank. So, and then the senior officers will also see the challenges that their general ranks, when they send them, they'll see, they'll feel, and then also know the challenges that they face. Sometimes it is tough. Some people would want to argue the police officer all on end and all that. And sometimes they will have to call somebody. So if the senior officer is there, it is better and he can also feel and then attend to some urgent needs. Because sometimes there was an incident that happened over the weekend at Pong, Pong that is on the Kosovo Road. And the officers came from Kufuridwa. So the driver said, oh, I had this problem. So I want to, can I talk to your commander? He said, go to Kufuridwa. You see the challenges that they face. So if the officer is there, or if he's not there, he should be accessible through the phone numbers that will be making 
uh, known to the public so that you can call, your complaints will be recorded, and it will be followed up. It is a very important step that we are taking to make sure that there is more police accountability on the ground because policing should be done on the beat. And that is where we need to get in touch with the public. That is where any contact with the policeman on the beat has major implications about the image of the Ghana Police Service. And since we senior officers are the ones who should set good example, we should be seen on the field. How soon should we expect to see them on the field? In fact, we had a meeting yesterday for Accra and Tema officers. So it has already started. It has already started. And talking about senior police officers, there's been this uh, speculation and rumor that has been going on. It actually came up at one of the engagements that the sometimes senior police officers send the junior ranks out and expect that they come and uh, account for the amount of bribes that they take. This is a pretty serious uh, uh, accusation or speculation that's coming from the public. Yes, I think sometimes it could be real. Sometimes it could be an excuse by other police officers to say that, well, I'm collecting this money to go and give to my commander. Meanwhile, the commander doesn't receive it. And maybe the commander has not endorsed it. So that's why we want commanders themselves to be there. If you are a senior officer, you go there and be taking one city. And you want to sacrifice your reputation or your rank, that is up to you. And it's also important that when they are there, the public will know that the police officer also cares for them. So or it will also curb this kind of excuse. Because if you are a junior rank, I've been telling them that if you are a junior rank, and I send you to go and take bribe, and you bring it to me, who sees you? Nobody knows me, but you are, because you are also aspiring to become a senior officer. Why do you have to go and then sacrifice your reputation because you want to satis uh, satisfy your commander? So let us put this issue to the test by getting our officers on ground. And I think that it will put a stop to these kind of accusations. And but I believe that senior officers who also want, don't want their names to be dragged in the mud. Reputation and image are key principles for every profession. Yeah. But where you have situations where this senior officer, as a junior uh, officer, would have taken, collected the one CD for a long time, he becomes a senior officer, he will still collect the one CDs as quotas from his people. You see, it's, it's a culture that we need to confront and tell everybody that it is wrong. And we need to change. And that is the step the Inspector General of Police, supported by all members of the Police Manager Board, are taking. And we need support from the public. The public support means that you must also know your rights, you must also respect rule regulations, and every other person should know what he has to do. So we also expect other agencies that are involved in civic education to let the public know what it entails. If you have to go and take a driver's license and you have a license B, what category of vehicle do you have to drive? Right. All these things go hand in hand so that when we have an informed public, then some few police officers will not take advantage of that ignorance, ignorance yeah. and then uh, extort monies from the public, which is not right. All right, one other complaint that came up, and uh, I'm hoping that would uh, elicit a smile from you so we can wrap this up, has to do with policemen who don't smile. People are complaining. They say they want to see a lot more police officers smile. I know some of them do, and uh, you're showing a smile, <laughs> flashing a smile, which is good. <laughs> so why don't we have a lot more? <laughs> There's a saying that the police is a friend, and friendship can be shown in different postures. Well, a smile is good, but you must also put up certain postures depending on the environment. There was an instance where a police officer was escorting a hundred criminal and he was smiling. People would say, ah, police in the park, can you, you are escorting an armed robber and you are smiling. This policeman is not serious. <laughs> so a smile it would depend on the occasion and the situation. But generally, the principle is that you must treat everybody fairly, you might be polite, and you might be courteous. Key things. That's how it should be.
All right. So you can still smile and, and uh, insist on, you know, arresting the guy or, you know, sending him to the, in, in insisting on the law. In real life situations, it depends. <laughs> I cannot give you a blanket rule that in all instances you might smile. But the key principle that is acceptable is you might be courteous, you might be polite, you might be polite, and you might be firm, but fair. And that doesn't hurt when you smile while at it. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. ECP <laughs> David Aklu, the Director General of uh, Public, Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service. Uh, he has been our guest on Ghana Police. Well, thank you too for watching and uh, for keeping your messages coming through on our Facebook and other social media platforms. Thank you very much and have a good night.